we're recording hurrah okay so um i'm just going to quickly share this share my screen um and just very quickly remind everyone of what we're talking about for review submissions is the project a fit for the cncf according to the charter and the toc principles i think uh things that we need to bear in mind for the charter and the toc principles are largely is it cloud native and um, there is a thing in the TOC principles about um, having a strong technical identity. So kind of not just any old project. We are looking for high quality project. Uh, but whether or not we want to assess for quality at Sandbox is a, is a thing. But if we really think it's not going to meet those goals, we might want to discuss. Um, is the project roadmap in line with the goals of the CNCF? Does the project appear to be on a good path to being well governed and vendor neutral? Uh, also remind ourselves that if we're going to reject, so if we do vote no on any project, we should uh, make some notes about what the reasons were for voting no. All right. With that in mind, uh, should we just work through the I guess since I'm sharing, I've got, got a copy of the thing here. Should we start with Camus? Anyone got any thoughts or comments about this project? Um, uh, it's, it's difficult. I mean, it's difficult to know if they've got what kind of governance at all there is, or who, I mean, it doesn't have a maintainer's file, which makes, uh, um, and, or, yeah, as Michelle says, doesn't have a code of conduct. I mean, how, how, how much are we going to ask for upfront for, the, for kind of structured governance and things like that? Well, did, we didn't we ask for a link to... Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, didn't we ask for a link to the code of conduct, for example, in the form itself? Yeah, did, yeah, so actually we did. And, and this one says not found. So, I mean, that should be a no right, right off the bat, right? Like. Yeah, okay, so I guess, Amy, when you filled in the spreadsheet, did you reach out to them at all? Because in this circumstance, right? Oh, these are the retrospective ones. Yeah, oh, right. exactly. Um, Right. Well, I mean, I still say we say no. So and, long ago. Yeah, I think we still have to say no and then just provide good feedback and they can always reapply. Okay, so we can say no because no code of conduct, but you don't have to wait for six months, which is our the normal scheme of things. The other one of yeah, I think given that, yeah, I think given that, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, the, the so other on... thing I wanted to, when I was looking at this, I thought the... Uh, the website and so on is quite saluto um, oriented. So I think maybe if we're going to say no, we should also give them some advice around making sure that they understand the vendor neutrality requirements. Michelle's suggesting, could, would we just say yes if we add a COC? Or just push it to the next review cycle um, and ask them to provide to provide more information. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be the only one project that I'm going to have information missing. Right. Can folks okay. hear me? Yes. Okay, so oh, hey. Um, so when I, when I talked to these folks like a year ago, one problem that I found with this project is they had no story around key rotation. Do we, and they didn't seem to care about that either. Do we, do we know if that has changed here? I believe they have got a story on that now. If I, recall correctly from looking at it. Okay. There are other, I mean, there's also the fact that it's written in C sharp, which is kind of an unusual choice in our world. I don't know if we consider I'd that. Like to, I, I think we should be very careful about saying things like that. Yeah, me too. I, I don't, I, I really would prefer not to get into the language game. Right, okay. Yeah, I mean, my my main issue with this project was the key rotation stuff, um, which is it, it. I mean, it sounded like a fine idea to me, but the fact at the time that they hadn't even thought about it seemed odd. 
Um, so oh. I, I would just want to know that they are at least thinking about that. But they, they did have a detailed threat model, which I thought was unusual for a project in this kind of stage, which I was quite, but I didn't have a chance to read it all through and see what was in it. But I did think that they had actually spent, at least spent some time thinking about what they would, about those kinds of things. So I was, I'm just looking at a PR that says uh, ad support. It's a merged PR in Camus, ad support for automatic key rotation. Okay, cool. Sounds good. So actually, are we saying, do we, do we still want to say no, sort out the COC and come back next time? Or do we want to hold a vote and well, say, it's, if you add a COC, you can, you can join? It sounds like you thought that there was too much vendor in there too, right? Which feels like something they should... Yeah, okay. So we should just uh, get them to double check that they are happy with that. And if they want to add a COC, resubmit, we'll do them next time. Yeah, that feels right. Plus one. All right. Next one is CNI Genie. Any comments or concerns on this one? Shall we go to a vote on whether to accept it? Okay, um, how about if if I say votes for um, CNI Genie in the chat, and then people can put their, you know, we'll know that it's in for CNI Genie. Yeah, Michelle saying no issues. I don't see any issues. Cool, votes rolling in, yay. <laughs> All right, next one on the list is Captain. Uh, Event-based control plane. Any comments or concerns? My notes on this, I thought it looked actually in really good shape. Um, so let's go for to a vote, yeah? Autocorrect is not like Captain. Oh, sorry, I, I was, sorry I was Katie. About, uh, I was about to mention that even SIGAP Delivery did a review on the project. So, which was positive, by the way, so. Okay. Next one on the list is Victoria Metrics. Um, the one thing that I was worried about here is that it appears to me as though Victoria Metrics is the name of the project and the name of the company. So they would need to uh, change the name of one of those things. When does the when does the trademark donation happen? Is it does it happen after they become a sandbox project? Yeah, basically from day one. Yeah, it sounds like a valid issue. Uh, let's give that feedback and move on. Okay, so 
we'll go back to Victoria metrics and say, you realize you will have to change one of these things. Uh, there's also Michelle raising a concern about contributing guidelines as well. Um, bit sparse. I'm just reading that out because of, uh, for, the, for the benefit of the recording. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's go back to Victoria metrics and kind of uh, double check on the trademark issue, the fact that it is, you know, a year old, so they may have rethought, we might want to just check. I think that in other respects, it looked like a interesting and active project. So um, if I didn't have concerns about the trademark side of things, I'd be voting for it. All right. Are you happy with that, Amy? I am indeed. You can move on. All right. Okay. The next one is Kudo. Which we have had some discussion about before. When was the discussion? Operator framework to join that project. Do you know the uh, progress there? Sorry, Zhang, I couldn't quite hear the beginning of that. Yeah, I heard that they are talking with the operator framework to join that project. So they want to merge the two projects into one. So I, I, I found a link to the uh, to there. I, I don't know what, whether they are merged or not. Okay. I believe they're not merging and that they decided they wanted to stay as a project in their own right. But um, I think one of the maintainers from Kido is now also a maintainer on uh, operator framework to try and help with the kind of collaboration between the two projects. Oh, it's a, a link that Zhang's posted. I mean, as far as I can tell, this is an independent, healthy, you know, very, very active project. Yeah, I think given what we're saying about Sandbox, I, I can't really see. I mean, mer mer merging while in Sandbox would be a perfectly reasonable outcome. So... Yeah, Kudo is still figuring out what it wants to specialize in this from Michelle, uh, but they're energized and want to make things better in the operator world, which I think is, is as good a reason to admit something into Sandbox as any. Shall we hold a vote on Kudo? Yeah, I think we have votes good. All right, votes for Kido. Cool. Oh, I've changed the window. Okay. Chaos Smash is the next one on the list. Um, so there's two of these. Uh, chaos projects. Uh, this one's pin cap and the other one is litmus project, litmus chaos, sorry, from Maya data. Um, not that there's any reason not to have two competing projects in the sandbox at the same time. Any thoughts or comments or concerns? Oh, code of conduct not found on this one. Good, good spot, Michelle. All right, so I think, do we want to go back to them and say, you need a code of conduct or do we want to, and, and ask them to resubmit next time? Yep, that sounds good. Yeah, I feel like that's the right thing to do. I, I mean, I feel like we shouldn't, worry about saying no to people, I guess, and having them resubmit. Right. 
yeah, hopefully we can make this process kind of frequent enough that it doesn't doesn't seem too much of a blocker. Yeah. Okay. Right. Moving on, cloud custodian. Um, I have to express a like kind of conflict of interest because my company does something similar to this. Um, so I'm just putting that out in the open. Uh, anyone want to say anything about this project? I don't. Know, I know that the folks there uh, at uh, Capital One they're definitely interested, and I think unlike many, it's it's not a. It, it, I don't think it's going to go become a commercial product necessarily. So, I think it's it's a good one to have. Yeah, I think it's you know it's end user driven and it's also quite active. I I I like to look at the uh, contributor community and uh, the the commit uh, frequency. I mean, this one is like way up there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, despite what I'm saying about conflict, I think it's actually a really good project. <laughs> All right, should we do a vote for this one? Vote for Cloud Custodian. Okay, next one is serverless workflow spec. Again, no, no code of conduct for this one. Is that because they've come from the working group? Like, I think they've come out of the, the CNCF servers working group. So they probably assume they're under the CNCF code of conduct already. The work group should have a C, uh, code of conduct at least. Right, and Michelle's saying it doesn't have one already. Okay, so that seems like we should be consistent and say, please come back with a code of conduct. I think this is kind of in the spirit of things that the CNCF, you know, it's a neutral, neutral ground for um, collaboration but they can presumably carry on under the working group regardless. So come back with the CSE. Sounds good to me. Michelle making a side note that we should make sure all the six have code of conduct as well. Do they not inherit by default the CNCF code of conduct? Yeah, we expect them to. We, we put the code of conduct in our foundation repo. If we technically put it in the, I think the dot GitHub repo, it would inherit, it would inherit across all repos. Um, so that's more of just a little task that we could kind of do yeah. um, to, to make that easier. But yeah, I mean, they, they've been working under the serverless working group for a long time. I, I do think that we should make sure that that's present in every repository, just yeah. Yeah, I think the Kubernetes repos have some sort of job that checks the GitHub makes this easy now. You just have a dot GitHub repo and it inherits everywhere. Nice. So is there, I'm just wondering if the serverless working group, I mean, do we already have that dot GitHub file in CNCF? And does that mean the working group is subject to that? No, we don't have it. We have the, re we have the code of conduct that pointed you to, but I'm going to create it now because it's just going to take me a second. Yeah, okay. All right, so I guess we we move on, come back to them next time, yeah? And the next one is Dex. Any thoughts or comments about Dex? I don't know if any of you were following the uh, comments on this spreadsheet, if anyone wants to uh, go and 
double check into the minutiae of exactly who from VMware has or has not contributed to this at any point in time. <laughs> Uh, there's a note in the spreadsheet saying the code of conduct is the core OS code of conduct. I don't think we don't actually require a specific code of conduct. We just require that there is one and it's reasonable, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Projects could choose their own code of conduct. Right. Are we going to say as part of uh, being accepted into Sandbox that they have to change to the CNCF code of conduct? That's generally what we recommend. I mean, there's been exceptions where like Kubernetes has a slightly different, um, you know, model where they have a code of conduct uh, committee. Um, the CNCF one's a little bit different where it just goes to kind of staff and optionally a mediator. Got it. So I don't think that's a blocker for, for DEX, right? So should we hold a vote? Any other comments about DEX? All right, let's do votes for DEX. Great. Next one is Litmus Chaos. Um, the one thing I thought about this was, this was from Maya data and the project is quite sort of labeled as uh, as a Maya data project at the moment. So it would need some work to look more vendor neutral than it currently does. To uh, comment on that, they have previously did the work for open ABS over time to kind of strip out all the Maya data stuff. So it, they've done the work in the past, so they're probably capable of doing it again. Any other comments or concerns before we move to a vote? Should we wait until that's complete or? No, I don't think we should because it's kind of, uh, well, partly because we already say we give projects a, yeah. um, a grace period and partly because like if they go to all the work of becoming vendor neutral and then we say no, that seems rather unfair. Okay. And uh, who's going to follow up to make sure this gets done afterwards? CNCF staff. We, we, we monitor projects and Perfect. kind of onboard them through this. So I, I wouldn't worry about it. They've, they, they knew the pain with open EBS in the past. Um, so I think they would move faster this time around. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. I think for these, these projects where we're saying, you know, you need to do the vendor neutrality work, we do need to make that clear as we tell them that they've passed. So Amy, can you make sure that happens? Can do. Great. All right, should we move to votes for Litmus Chaos? So Key Cloak is the next one on the list, but they are going for incubation now instead. So unless anybody particularly wants to, I think we just skip over and move to Metal Cubed. Such a great name. Mm -hmm. uh, any, any questions or comments? No code of conduct. No roadmap. I did find myself just having that kind of, well, I don't know if this is, I was, I was asking myself why 
uh, whether there are any alternative projects to this and and what the motivation for joining CNCF is for this project. I think it's also a very interesting use case of uh, bare metal host provisioning. It has a good points of integrating with the cluster EPIs. I think yeah, I wasn't I think completely it's, uh, sure how much neutrality it had at this point, um, which, you know, it's not a requirement for sandbox projects, but I, it was that question of does it have, and I might be wrong, I'm, I, you know. I think many, definitely many projects at sandbox stage lack vendor neutrality for sure. Right. It just makes me ask the question of like, is, is that what they're aiming for with, with the application? Yeah, you know, may, maybe that's it. Maybe, you know, by joining the CNCF, they are going, they are looking for that vendor neutrality, but I don't, they're, they're not particularly on that path as we look at them today. It doesn't have to be a blocker, but um. is it the other Do question the is the same problem where Metal Cubed is the name of the company. I think it's Red Hat, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm just curious why, given it's based on Ironic, why they're not going to the OpenStack Foundation as well. It's kind of because it's related to Kubernetes. I mean, it could go either way. Yeah, I guess so. They also, yeah. have a, they also have a pluggable model for uh, for providers, and although Ironic is uh, is the only one today, they have all the hooks for implementing uh, others. Okay. So no COC and uh, no roadmap. I guess that means automatic no, and then revisit this once they reapply. Yeah. All right. I think that's right. Right, moving on to Artifact Hub with a storied history. So my reservation about this is that if this hadn't come from CNCF, if this had come from, you know, some other source, I think we'd be looking at it and saying this seems very early stage, even for Sandbox. You know, the, the community interest has not been huge at this point. You know, I have a, I have a question. Is this still a CNCF funded project? Uh, you know, there are just a very small number of developers actually working yeah. on it. Are they, are they consultants? Yeah, there's, there, there, there's contractors um, that are working on this. And I think Matt Farina is helping out from the helm um, community as, as far as I know, but I'm not involved day to day. I could, I could find out more information. Yeah. I mean, right now it has four contributors and 104 stars. And one of, one of the contributors, three commits by Matt and one's Dan Kern. So it's basically the two people who've been, uh, it's basically practice. the two people who've been paid to work on it, which is yeah. not very strong community showing. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit difficult because if you look at C CNI Genie, it's basically one or two people and we had no issue with that one, apparently. Yeah, I don't think we're saying contributors or number of contributors is a blocker for a sandbox anymore, right? Yeah, but we, I think we have to believe that it's a project that has some community interest. Don't we? I mean, is it a, a real fit for... I think that's really hard to gauge because it's it's a trade-off, right? It's you know you could have a project that is not popular, but part of the reason they want to get into sandbox is because they want to build a community around it. Mm -hmm. Also, could agree on that point as well. The Artifact Hub is has been around for just a couple of months. The initiative was presented in January, and I think there was kind of some traction in March. So it's still not enough. I think to get enough, like enough community around it yet. But I still think it's a good idea overall as a project. 
it's also meant to host artifacts of uh, different cloud native projects. So the contributions can be divided into two parts, like one contribution, code contributions, other people contributing the artifacts to be hosted there. Um, I think it's a good initiative too. Mm, and yeah, agreeing with Michelle here as well. I've been at the meeting when Artifact Hub was introduced to the end user community. And it was, I would say, tiltingly plot towards the positive end. But yeah, I think it requires a bit more time to actually see that. So I think this is difficult because we might have a bit of a chicken and egg situation, you know. It, is Artifact Hub not getting community interest because it's not really clear who's driving it? Um, it has a strange heritage because of its, you know, the, the way that it came about. But I'm just, I, I struggle to see that if that project had come from another source that we wouldn't be saying well you need to prove a bit more just a bit more community interest before we know that it's really on the right path yeah i'm, I'm wary of the community interest as a bar for our new sandbox just because i feel like we want to use the sandbox as a way to encourage adoption so it's definitely a chicken and egg problem Okay, do, uh, do people want to move to a vote on it? To be honest, I don't mind skipping it, but at the same time, Chris puts a very good point. Like, do we need to give a consistent quota of releases? Not quota, just a consistent manner of releases because CNI Genie, for example, is not. Does it mean we will revise that project as well? Well, because I think CNI we should Genie kind of has, have a consistency. Has had more interest. And to be fair, we've sat on CNI Genie for how long? A yeah. year? A year? Now, CNI Genie might go, actually, yeah, it's too late. You've missed the boat. That, that I, I, I'm, just, I'm just more, more concerned from a, you know, if a project hasn't released in a year, what does that mean? Is it stable? It's not really maintained anymore? Just something to consider as you review project proposals. And, and I, I, regardless of what we do, I think we should aim for consistency. Uh, for Sandbox, at least, let's make it kind of as much binary based on a bunch of checklists as possible. And so whatever the criteria is that we hold, let's make it clear and let's apply that to everyone. Yeah, so if we just go back to what we're saying is, is it a fit for the, is, yeah, is, it, is it essentially a cloud native project? Is the roadmap in line with the goals? Does it appear to be on a good path to becoming well governed and vendor neutral? So I think one way of interpreting this whole vendor neutrality issue is, you know, does it, ha I mean, at the moment, it's funded by a, a vendor neutral organization, the CNCF. Um, does it look like it's on a path to kind of community adoption? It seems a bit soon to say that to me. That's my worry anyway. Shall yeah, I mean, the, the project was supposed to have a natural community of the people distributing artifacts that and the existing artifact projects. And I'm, I kind of had assumed that they would get involved when this thing came out. And I'm just a bit concerned that 
that they haven't been at all because these were the you know these were the people it was meant for so yeah so if, if they spend some time targeting getting people involved for, you know rather than running more code that would for the next few months and we can revisit it that would be that would make sense to me I think I feel similarly. Okay, so shall we move to a vote on it? Or, I mean, do, do people feel motivated to vote on that one? I, I, I think so, because from my perspective, you know, what I listened to about this project is does Chris specifically seems like CNCF is pretty committed to, uh, you know, to funding it. And that for me, that's no different from a startup funding a project. And you know, any 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 other projects that the folks behind it could be pulled as well. And 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 you know, as sandbox, I think that alone probably qualifies. But but you know, I certainly would. I I actually kind of believe we should. Uh, you know, it's just like just like we shouldn't treat CNCF in a in a in a in a in a special way, but but we shouldn't reverse discriminate either. So if if uh, if you know if our own organization wants to fund the project, I just don't feel like they should be held at a higher standard. So there's a couple of interesting comments in the chat, Chris. Uh, mentioned that you know project sandbox go through annual review so we always have a chance to say no after a year if it isn't going anywhere as a fail safe michelle saying uh the question i go back to the project with or the feedback i'd give is how do you plan on getting the community involved because i don't want this to be an effort only sustained by contractors uh and then but what if people aren't involved because it's not a sandbox project But then again, if somebody, you know, if a random Joe blogs comes to us and says, I'd like my, I've been paying two contractors for some number of months to build a project and it looks like this, I, would we, would we think this is a good basis for the project? I mean, I, I think so. I looked at I looked at the Git repo. They're even running a little service. You know, it's a discovery service. It took me a while. Initially, I was a little confused, but I think once Matt explained it to me, it it seems to make sense. I and mean, there's no guarantee it's gonna be successful, but you know, it's certainly something worth doing. Shane convinced me with the reverse discrimination point. It would be a fine thing if a, it would be fine if a company used some contractors to build a thing out and then contributed. That is true. And I guess we know that it is intended to be a, you know, right from the get go, it was intended to be a CNCF initiative as in a neutral initiative. Does anyone else have any points they want to make before we move to a vote? All right, let's let's move to a vote. There, I can't type hub. Can't type hub. There we go. All right. 
where were we? That was Artifact Hub. The next one is Kuma. Anyone have any questions or concerns about Kuma? Think yeah, I'd, be curious, I'd be curious about Matt's opinion too, because it's a, it's, I, I talked to Kong about it actually, but since it's an envoy, you know. Uh. Yeah, where's our resident service mesh expert? <laughs> <laughs> um, from, a, from a sandbox perspective, I'm for sure supportive. Like I don't, I don't really see the harm. Um, you know, they, they appear to be attempting it in a non-Kong specific way and they've made good effort on their website and their documentation, you know, to, to not really reference Kong. Um, so, you know, I, I would not be supportive of any stage beyond Sandbox, but, um, you know, especially with the lack of a Envoy-based service mesh in the foundation currently, it seems fine to me. Sorry, I think Michelle's asking, do they have a freemium model? I mean, the the whole thing is free. As far as I know, I, I, I don't actually know of any, any enterprise product that they're doing currently. If anything, they would be doing support. Um, so I don't, I don't think there's any open core type model here. I think it's all there. I did have on my notes, you know, if we accept them to make sure that they understand the requirements for neutrality, I think as things stand there is some Kong branding but is there okay um if there is yeah we should definitely have them remove that for sure I've had enough conversations cool. with I think Marco over there that I think they get it so yeah Marco is Mark he's he's definitely motivated for sure uh, I would consider a part of onboarding the sandbox to kind of get them to strip any things that we that we find so I wouldn't consider that a blocker. We've had other projects do the same. Right. Should we move to a vote? Votes for Kuma. How are we doing for time? Five minutes, but we might be able to extend a little bit. Let's see. Next one is Parsec. Um, just to say that I, I am a, I was a founder of this project, um, and I, they have added a code of conduct. So I, I probably won't. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I've got a conflict of interest on this one. But it's it's a, it's I'm not really very much involved now, apart from talking to them because it's, it's main, uh, mainly I'm um, working on it now, but um, I thought this looked look really cool. I was, it, it's actually really close to hardware. I was, I guess that was my one question is, is CNCF the best? Uh, they, they, I mean, they, they are, are working closely with Spiffy um, and they are basically, they want a neutral ground to work in because um, Microsoft wanted that before they contribute. Um, and it was originally, I mean, we, I was involved because originally because we were using it potentially for container based use cases. And I think that's still a use case that they're very interested in as well. So I think it's um, generally applicable. I mean, yeah, the, the, there potentially are other places in LF they could go, but they, they, supportive of CNCF and interested in being in CNCF? I, I think it's a, I think it's a really cool project. I, I talked to them about it. It's a, it's a very ambitious project, but you know, but it's, I think technically it's, technically it's really sound. It's just a lot of, you know, like key management kind of capabilities. Obviously we know that the, 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 the really the most secure form is through hardware, but there's just no standards for it. Everyone does it a little differently. 
and they're they're kind of I mean at a at a grand scale they're trying to uh, uh, create some kind of a common interface for that. So it's, it's quite noble. Uh, it'll you know it'll <laughs> it'll it'll if ARM takes the lead, I think it's a really good thing for the for the industry. There's a nice load of you know different organizations involved. I thought it was uh, you know really good candidate for we want to be in a foundation because of neutrality. So. Yeah. All right, should we take this one to a vote? Okay, the next one on the list is K3S. In the next three minutes. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah. I'm thinking maybe we should I actually need to Need, definitely need to be on for this discussion, but I, I definitely, I actually need, is have a hard stop, and there, there are like three yeah. more projects. Maybe we I do too. I have, a, I have a hard stop at nine. Sorry. Right. Let's skip K three S because it will take discussion. And do you think we can get through BFE in the three minutes remaining? It's another mesh related one, so why not? Yeah. So we'll just have to apologize to K3S that we didn't have enough time. BFE looks pretty similar to things like Ambassador. Am I right with that? Any reservations or concerns? Uh, it, it powers Baidu, so it definitely runs at scale. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do votes for BFE. <gasps> do we want to try and do squeeze in cross play? Two minutes, do it. <laughs> One minute. I see two minutes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> any thoughts or comments about cross-playing? I'm pre-typing votes for cross-playing just so we can be ready to go. I mean, I, I'm, I think it's a pretty interesting project. It is a little bit tied into Upbound, Upbound and their company, but I think that um, not any more than a lot of other projects. Um, so. Yeah, I like I like it. I think it's a in really interesting use case for Kubernetes. It's not really, I mean, at least the company name is not cross cross plane, so I think it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I think they're going to have to work on governance. I would be my guess going forward, or at least participation. But that's not a blocker for sandbox. Right. So the usual advice to make sure they get, you know, properly neutral, and we'll keep an eye on them from governance point of view. Let's go to the votes. All right. Okay, I'm going to sign off. Bye-bye. Well, thanks, everyone. <laughs> yep, bye. Okay, we did super well. Awesome. <laughs>